All right, guys, I have uh, my two Christian sisters in the house. And um, we want to record something for the viewers. We are going to share ideas, views from different angles. And I know by the end of the day, we come to a conclusion. I know. <laughs> so now I have um, my sister on my right. Her name is um, Michelle. Michelle. Valentine, yes. Valentine. That's it, yes. Okay. And then uh, Michelle Valentine comes with... Um, um, Pastor Debra Conlon. Okay. Debra. Debra Conlon, yes. Okay. So now we are going to have a discussion with um, Michelle and Debra. Uh, first of all, I just want Michelle to tell us a little bit about herself. We know her, then we can move into details. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm a mom of two children, two beautiful children, um, a girl of five and a little, and my son is 23, not little. <laughs> um, I am a, a recovered addict. I have was in, in addiction for 24 years mm -hmm. and I've now recently been clean for going on to two years. Mm -hmm. So just that's all by praise of God. God took me out of a, a very dark, dark place. And um, I said to him, well, Lord, if this is where I'm supposed to be, then you have to, I have to work for you. I, I can't work for, for man anymore. I can't, I can't live that lifestyle anymore. I had literally, I was at my, my, my tether. I was in my car gassing myself when God shouted. I, I don't know if it was God or if it was an angel, but they screamed. It, it was this loud boom for me to get out the car. Wow. And ever since that day, I've just I've put my head down and I've just asked God to to lead the way. And it's been amazing, the doors that he's opened. And I never thought oh, I'd just sit in here with you today. I never <laughs> thought I'd, I'd have this opportunity. Yeah. I, I, I always felt like I was I was invisible. I wasn't seen to the world. Wow. And, you know, God is going, I don't know, he's just taken me from one leap to the next Today, leap. Deborah. Yeah. Okay. So that's Great. me. So Deborah. Hi, my name's Deborah, and um, I'm a mom of four, um, and a granny to be very soon on the 6th of July. I am super excited. I need to be invited to this. <laughs> oh, we will we'll definitely make a plan for that. Um, my children are um, in, in the, I have two children in their 30s, and my youngest daughter who's pregnant right now in her 20s, 28. Uh, my son-in-law, the Lord has blessed me with an amazing young man who um, really supports my daughter in such amazing ways, and I'm thankful for that. And then my, my Lot Lomiki, my son uh, Chad, who will be 21 in August, I'm so proud of his ways um, in his life as he stands strong as a Christian man in worship, in praise, the way he um, got, shows up as a leader. And um, I think really for me as a, as a mother, and a mother not only to my own children, um, I... I am known as a mother to many. Um, yeah. I'm very passionate about youth. Um, I do a lot of youth development, also work with a lot of women in GBV. Um, personally, coming from a very challenged childhood that was in and around um, sexual abuse, um, also around um, addictions, um, going into a marriage of 30 years, um, yes, lots of really amazing things out of the marriage. Um, but sadly, there was a lot to do with rejection. Um, that re rejection tore me down to a place of where I also just became a place of existence. Um, and after 30 years with my partner, the Lord brought me to a place of decision. Mm -hmm. um, you know, was I going to just exist or was I going to live? And at that stage, I was in full-time ministry, um, running a Christian campsite, retreats, um, workshops. And, you know, the Lord just came to me one day and he said, the truth will set you free. And so I do still love my, my ex-husband very much, but I know that sometimes there comes where there has to be the separation. Um, it can't always be that way. Mm -hmm. um, and when we separate, we grow. You know, I think we set, us, set each other free. And I've, I've always tried to be a mom like that. I'm always supportive of my children. I encourage other moms to be there for their children. But I also encourage parents to pray for their children against, you know, what the enemy comes to rob and steal in our families, in our homes. And I am so very blessed with my children and 
the way they live their lives and now they don't know Jesus because I say so. Okay. They've chosen to make him the center of their lives and for that I thank God. And it's a youth month. It's yeah. a youth month in now. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So so I think this is the perfect uh, yeah. day for us to have this discussion. Absolutely. And um what do you have to say about this youth month in I think uh, you know for for our youth um we need to start standing up for them. We need to start um being adults to our children because like right now our children are so um overtaken by what's going on in the world and how the world expects them to you know to to be how to act if you don't act this way then you don't get get that if you don't that beautiful if you don't look that that certain way you'll never be able to mm, have it yes yeah, yeah. Mm. so you know just it, it's just society in a whole has is is making our children confused mm. and we've got to get to the point where we've got to stand up and say so far no further because at the end of the day we are responsible for those children mm. yeah. whether they are our own children or whether they are children that don't have mothers and fathers mm. you know there there is so much in this world for everybody that you know we've got to now just st- step out of our own selfishness yeah. and start stepping out there for for, for the youth yeah. yes mm. and and building them up because that's what they need they need direction mm-hmm. you know at kids today you ask them what they want to do with their lives a lot of them say to i don't know confused oh, they're confused they don't know what they want to do mm-hmm. we want to be able to open up a doorway for them in a and a place where they can come and learn about themselves and grow strong within their own personalities so that they know what they want to become when they're older they have a clear goal of where they want to go i think that's you know for our youth it's difficult out there today. You know, it's a dog, dog eat dog world. So it's it's they. As Deborah was saying, that the, the children they've adopted to center Christ mm. in the middle of their life. Mm. Is that um, coming because of uh, the Christian background surrounding these kids, or what? Um, I would say, from from my perspective, I didn't grow up in a Christian home, mm-hmm. but I grew up with a mom that understood religion. So from a very early age, she taught me the importance to pray. She taught me to go to Sunday school. Um, She was also just always a mom and even my dad that always taught us to respect other people. So a lot of the godly principles Mm -hmm. was how I grew up. But when I found God when I was 13 through a scripture union teacher who showed me that God was real, um, How can you tell us about it? Um, truthfully, what had happened was we had an amazing teacher, and we did a we did a lesson on cross and the switchblade, mm-hmm. and I think the book on cross and the switchblade changed many lives um, about his journey to finding Christ, and just the love and the passion of this woman um, turned my life around. I needed. I realized at that time in my life when I was sixteen, um, life was totally out of control. My father's drinking had become, um, you, you know, um, had gone to higher levels. Um, there was just, I, I didn't really see hope in what was happening so in our life. So during that classes, was it something spiritual or you, you took decisions by yourself? It was, it was definitely spiritual. I think the way that she came, um, you know, just with her love, her understanding, her compassion, she brought Christ so that we could actually realize mm-hmm. that um, we needed this in our life to have hope. And that if he was part of our decisions and our choices, um, we would make better better decisions mm. and not want to get wrapped up. I mean, my life could have so easily gone into addiction. It could have gone into alcohol, but by finding Christ and realizing that he was my hope, that he was my strength. Okay, so meaning you were not a Christian then? I wasn't a Christian then. Okay. She she led us to Christ okay. and by her actions, you know, by her faith, by her love, by her care, um, we could see Christ in her and that was something I needed at that time in my life as a youth. So how, um, how was the lifestyle of the person who led you to know Christ? Um, she was she was also just a very beautiful person. She, she um, I think just the way she behaved, the way she respected you, um, the way she showed up, um, she was always giving, you know, always sharing, you know, you know, sharing hope with you. Um, you know, she taught us to pray. 
Um, we, we started as a small scripture union group of about 30 or 40 in a class. Mm -hmm. And within a period of uh, a couple of weeks, um, we had grown where we actually used the playgrounds to actually share, the, share God. Um, okay, so and so there was her, a revival. Because of her attitude. Because and of how, her attitude. how she behaved. How she behaved. So you can agree with me that yes. uh, Christianity is not a religion, but it's a lifestyle. Uh, exactly. Definitely a lifestyle. If mm -hmm. it wasn't by her, her works and her actions, um, I wouldn't have seen Jesus. Um, because it would have just been a word that I didn't really understand. Yes, I went to Sunday school and I knew... I knew that there was God, but more from a religious perspective. But she showed us who God was in person. She came to us as a as a, as man, if I could say that. Mm. And her ways was what 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 drew me in. Um, I wanted, She made me feel like I belonged. She made me feel loved. She she made us know that there was something bigger so ever than since just you the became Bible. A Christian. Yes. Uh, have you noticed, or have you? Do you have this feeling that Christians are practicing the life of Christ? Oh, that's now a very challenging question because um, without stepping on many toes, I think we have some phenomenal churches out there and phenomenal uh, preachers, pastors, prophets, evangelists. Um, for me personally, I believe that we need to we need to be. Um, more assertive in living God um, and not just being the Word of God mm -hmm. um, because the Word of God I would say in a way is easy living God is not mm. because when we truly live God's life we will face persecution but do we understand that in our persecution that the Lord is there do we understand that the enemy will come against us in the times of of our walk and it's you know are we are we just being a Sunday Christian Mm -hmm. Or are we actually living God every day? Mm -hmm. Are we getting up and actually showing the world that without God, we actually do not have a life? You know, He is our before and our after, our coming and our going. He's before our decisions. He's before the choices we make. Um, he is and the center of everything. We, he is the center. He is definitely the center of everything. I'll come and back that's to how you. we have to live. I want to ask um, some question here. Um, when... The coronavirus was, I mean, mm. high. There was a pandemic and then there's this thing called lockdown. Yes. I don't know about South Africa, mm. but in Israel, like three months we were inside, indoors. Mm. Nobody goes out. Yes, yes. Yeah. It was it the same here? Yes, yes it was the was. same, yeah, yes. Yeah. So how did you worship? With, by, by myself. Okay. Put on YouTube, found a song, and that's how I praise and worship. I got my food at least through, through um, you know, media. Because I mean, uh, you weren't allowed to go to churches. You weren't allowed to, you know, communicate with anybody. So for me, I, I just, and I still do it today. I mean, I put my music on every morning. I listen to my word of God that I, I've, I find on on YouTube a good pastor to talk or motivational something to get your day going. Yeah. Because the, if you don't start your day with God, your day is not going to start. And even in lockdown, I mean, lockdown brought with it a whole lot of problems, not just mm -hmm. the virus. Mm -hmm. It brought depression. It brought anxiety. It brought social distancing. I mean, the one thing that man was made, well, us humans were made to do is to have contact with each other. Mm -hmm. And the virus took that away from us. So you, will you agree with me that this coronavirus thing um, <laughs> gave an idea to Christians? to get Christ by their, I mean, a personal relationship. They to, the Christians must build their personal relationship mm. with exactly. Christ. This mm. coronavirus taught us this. It's yes. in the Bible, though. Yes. But the coronavirus gave us gave, the idea yes. that yeah. we must get, build relationship with God personally mm. because we're not going to church. Mm. Yes. We're not going to give offerings, tithe, whatever, whatever. You are in a yeah. house indoors. Mm. Yes. So automatically, if God or Jesus came during that time as a Christian, what happens? Um, I don't know. Um, I think it's just, you know, uh, for for me growing up, I didn't. I grew up in a family that we. I grew up in a Christian home. Yeah. You know, so I I grew up with God in my home, but I never knew Him personally. I knew who God was. I knew that He was God. That He's He's the Creator. Yeah. That Jesus came, He saved us. I I knew Jesus as a person, but I never 
had that intimate relationship with him. And with the, with the coronavirus, my yeah. relationship, that intimacy grew more, mm-hmm. you know, and I, me becoming an addict, you know, you could say, well, you grew up in a Christian home. It doesn't matter. Satan will, does, Satan doesn't care about your color, your creed, mm-hmm. or if you, your family is in, in Christ and you're not. He will take you wherever he is, you know, and I had to come to that place, like um, Deborah yeah. says, of complete surrender. Mm-hmm. I had to come to that ultimate place of complete surrender to say, Lord, I want to know you more. Mm. Because you cannot wake up in the morning and look outside and look at the beautiful sunrise and say that there's not a God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, the fact that he just breathes that breath into us every morning to wake up. That's mm. all I do is so I give the thanks lockdown. for that. So yeah. during the lockdown. You yes. knew God by yourself. Yes. And now That's, you can talk to God by yourself. Exactly. Yeah. It, 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 I think that also, in a way, it took, it took us to, to God, you know, to God to say to us, I need you now, my child. Yeah. I don't want you and the Because everybody the, was like, the wow, the world is coming to an end or what? So you started yes. to say, okay, man, I have to give my life to Christ now. Yeah, you see, and everybody <laughs> did it out of a have to. And how many people are, uh, that did it out of a have to are still following that way? Mm-hmm. Yeah. God doesn't want that have to. He wants that heart of you. Mm-hmm. That's all he wants. So we gave God full time during the lockdown. Yes. Full time. Yes. Yeah. I had to. I mean, if you... It was that or, or look at uh, how you turn out with, with, I mean, I didn't even have a job. So, I mean, I had to find something to do online. I had to find work to do online, you know, and it, it came up with, with all those problems that you've got to support your children. You, I'm a single mom. What am I going to do? Mm-hmm. And I just, I, in that time, and I did, I had a supernatural encounter with Jesus because I sat on my floor and I, I just said, Lord, I haven't, I don't know you. I haven't known you for so long. This is the time. This, and and I was sitting with my haunches, I was sitting haunched like this, and it was like I could feel him sitting right next to me. That's what I'm talking and about. he said to me, I've been waiting for you. Yeah. yeah. I could physically, it was like a physical manifestation, but it was not, if I can put it, it was a, a spiritual. But I, as I sat there with my eyes open, I could see Jesus. Just so you sitting see next the lockdown, um, yes. mentally, you were yes. prepared for God. Yes. There we go. Yes. yes. So, that's so after the lockdown, you should continue like this. Yes. Always you stay home. Mm-hmm. And then you talk to God. Yes. Because I, that's okay. what he wants. He wants that intimate relationship. Yeah. He doesn't want just that church Sunday mm-hmm. relationship mm-hmm. with you. That's what it comes so down to. So do you believe to. that, um, Deborah, do you believe yeah. that we have, uh, where three or two people are gathered in my name, there I am? You believe this, yeah? Yes, I do. I definitely do. Yeah. Um, I think my life is very evident of that. Um, I believe that every day. Um, I know that the, the Lord is my personal, my personal relationship with Him is vital mm-hmm. because what, what my relationship with Him is the overflow to others. But the connection to others is also vital. So even for me in COVID, um, just leading up to COVID, I lost my partner on the 31st of December 2019. Sorry. Um, and you know there was promise of a future there Um, and then three months later my mom had a stroke so um, and then we went into lockdown so it was it was all that that was like thrown emotions um, mentally emotionally trying to cope and I know that if it wasn't for my circle (laughs) <laughs> um, my family, my God family, I would never have survived you, to where I am right make now. It, yeah? And they helped me make it through, mm-hmm. you know, um, because they they saw me, they heard me, they knew my needs. Um, and in the same thing, even when the challenges were the other way, you know, there was that 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 joining, that uniting in prayer, that we can have the confidence to pick up the phone and say, you know, we have crisis, we've lost somebody, somebody is dying, um, and. I think that was the beauty of COVID mm-hmm. because we, we we could not maybe go to each other, mm-hmm. but just by a call, by a moment, we could connect and we could we could raise up an army of prayer. And, and in that, we would then be able to see God's work. We would come back and we would testify um, to what God has done and how God has shown up and how God has healed and how the lives have changed. So yes, definitely, there is, it is very vital for us to understand that we do, we're do we not lone rangers. The Lord says we're not lone rangers. Mm-hmm. But it is through our relationship in, in that overflows to others. And when it's overflowed to others, 
that's when we bless each other. So do you think uh, there's love in Christianity? Oh, love is inevitable. Um, I think, you know, love is, if we, uh, for me, I see the fruits of the Spirit as God's love. When we can resemble the fruits, then we will know God's love. Um, because God is only love mm -hmm. and, you know, love does not come with judgment. Mm -hmm. Love does not come with condemnation. Mm -hmm. um, love comes with, with forgiveness. And I know many people struggle with forgiveness. Um, I'd say that's probably one of the biggest hurdles we face. Mm. But, you know, when we release our enemies, when we release those who have come against us, there is mighty things that the Lord does when we when we forgive and we let go. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, so, you, you know, know if, love if is, you ama cannot, is amazing. If you cannot forgive one another mm. as a Christian, yeah. and you can recite the Lord's Prayer, do you know it's a case? Mm. Yes, because it's not true. You're not, you're not, you're not professing the truth. You're saying the words. It's like a lip service in a sense, it's but um, it's, you, it's actually not coming from like the depths of your heart. Um, and when you, you know, I, I remember before my father passed away, um, the Lord gave me the opportunity to lead my father to Christ. Um, and on on the day of his cremation, the Lord let me lead him through the fire. And that is only God. But I had to be able to do that because of God's love for me. I had to find forgiveness in my heart to set my father free. I had to set him free that he could fly. And that is what forgiveness is about. It's about setting somebody free. The Lord will deal with the rest. But it's in their freedom we also are set free. Do, do you know that after this interview, a lot of people will understand me, why I always talk about religion you just said it now mm. that you need to build your own personal relationship yes. with god yes. and also have the fruit of love yes. Amen. that is my preaching mm. but they don't mm. understand the conception between what i'm doing and what they are hearing mm. they think i'm attacking christianity <laughs> but they don't understand why i'm doing this yeah i'm just telling them to know god for themselves yeah, yeah. so if you take me as your pastor Mm -hmm. let's say I'm your spiritual pastor, pastor and I die mm -hmm. so what happened to you? I, I've got to keep going I've got to keep <laughs> going uh, <laughs> you're not there yeah. so I've got see, to find God the other way yeah, I've got to see, keep finding him that's what I'm saying yeah. so it's in the Bible that it says curse be unto anyone who put his trust on him mm. that's true yes so if you take somebody as your spiritual father, it's in the Bible, that's the only one father, mm -hmm. that is the one in heaven. In heaven yes. And if you're taking yes. somebody as your spiritual father, automatically you are putting curse on yourself. Yeah. 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 Because your eyes are on man. It's okay. Put your yeah. eyes on Christ. Yes. As a Christian. Mm. Yes. That's where, at times, most Christians find it difficult to understand the other Christian. Mm. They think you weren't try, ah, you are going to hell. Mm. Yeah. You were in makeup, ah, you are going to hell. Mm -hmm. And he's just said it. Mm. The fruit of love yeah. has no condemnation. Yes. Mm. <laughs> True. So, yeah. Yeah. And God doesn't see our <laughs> outer appearance, he sees our heart. He sees mm. the heart. Yes. That's the main reason why it's written in the Bible that mm. your body mm. is the temple mm. yes. of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So when you purify your body. Mm. automatically god is happy he lives there oh yes yeah. true but they believe god lives in the building it's also written in the bible that i do not live in the building that man has used his hand mm. to build mm. <laughs> it doesn't the building is just the place for us to gather in yeah. order for our churches to equip its people to yeah. go out and yeah. do what jesus do what jesus came to do love and save the lost that's all mm. we weren't asked to try and build monuments, make mountains, you know, mm. get as much cash in for the church as we can. All we were told to do is go out, see to the poor, love the widows, and Bind spread the, the and spread the gospel mm. to the nations. Because if you are preaching about building um, or uh, building your house in heaven, or I mean, mm. advising people not to worry about earthly goods, whatever, and then you, the pastor, 
you are riding Bentley, you are building cars. Exactly, yes, but your your congregation is starving. (laughs) Yeah. You know, like you said, who are you you idolizing? Who are you giving your money to at the end of the day? But then the Bible also says that you've got to be, you've got to give your 10% to God because that's not our money. It's not ours. And what the pastor does with it, God will sort that pastor out. Mm. You know, God will see, he will be judged by God that day. But we're supposed to be, and it's not just 10% of your money you're supposed to be giving God. It's the know, 10% of your everything that you're supposed mm. to give you know God. Do you know that I, I talked to a Jewish mm. about this Titan thing you mm-hmm. brought now. Mm. And he quoted some Bible verse and gave me an explanation. Mm. Okay. He first asked me that how many times did Matthew said Abraham paid to Matthew to Matthew to pay to Abraham. I, uh, I, th- I think I think it was yeah, Abraham. Abraham. Yeah. One yeah. of the one of one of them paid to the other. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> so <coughs> Abraham took this once in the Bible. Mm. Once, the tent he took it once in the Bible. Mm. This is what the Jew was telling me. Mm. And he asked me, so am I saying Abraham never met this person again in the Bible? Mm. So why didn't the person pay the tent again? Mm. But it was recorded once. That one I should put it as okay. I say, okay, so let's what do you want to say? Now he asked me that the body of a human being is the temple of God. Mm. That's where he lives. Mm. So the interpretation of that Bible verse, according to the Jew, he said, if God said, bring your tent into uh, to the house of the Lord, mm. so that it will be food and blah, 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 in the house of the Lord. Yes. He was not talking about building. Mm. He was talking about human beings. Exactly. He was talking about the, the body mm. of a human being, the widow, the poor, the orphan, yes. the needy. Mm. That's what the Bible was interpreted, the interpretation, the, the, the mm. interpretation of that verse. Exactly, yes, yeah. So it's not about me giving tent to anybody every month mm-hmm. it's about me going to the poor the mm-hmm. needy the orphan and then the widow mm-hmm. because it's in the bible that yes. the widows are my wives it's in the yes. bible yes it is yes. so even jesus came to earth and when he was i mean preaching he said to the congregation when i was sick you never came to me mm-hmm. when i was da, 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 they said when jesus what happened he said, because he did not do it for yeah so yes. The, that interpreta- interpretation of that Bible verse about the Titan ten, according to the Jew, mm. he told me that he was talking about human being mm. Mm. to help one another. Mm. It's not talking about somebody sitting somewhere and saying, yeah. "Bring me the money," mm. yeah. and then later God will judge me. No, he's no, talking about the, yeah. the the orphan, the widow, the, widow. the poor, mm. and the needy. Mm. That is what the Jewish community. Mm. especially mm. they always help themselves mm. Mm. and they are always growing yeah because they know once i'm part of this community mm. i'll get the love mm. yeah from them mm. and we we tend to us gentiles as you want to put it <laughs> 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 we tend to segregate yeah. those people instead yeah. of embracing them like yeah. we're supposed to like the bible they have love too much do. yes the love is the most important thing mm. because if you love ourselves the world will be peaceful. Yeah. Too much. Yeah. Exactly. There will not be too there much be, churches. Even yeah. if there's a church here called this Kwanaba Church, uh, Deborah Church, uh, whatever mm. church. Mm. And my members move from a Kwanaba church to Deborah Church. There's going to be a fight now as yeah. I speak. Yeah. Which is so wrong. Yeah. But we are all going to heaven, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. It doesn't matter. You know, it's yeah. like we we change cars. So why can't we you know, we, we, we update our cause, we update our education. Isn't it really, in a way, the same thing? But there's such, I, I feel in the churches, actually, it was a discussion we had this morning that, um, you know, the, the fear that seems to be around the churches of everybody, like, holding on to their congregations, um, fearful that they're going to go somewhere else. But surely there should be the joy that if your congregation maybe not necessarily outgrows your it's church a, it's, or it's, it's moves even, across. It's, it's even a mistake yes. to say, I have a congregation. Yes. You don't have a congregation. Yes. Because it's God's congregation. It, yeah. You don't it's have God's a church. People. Don't. You don't yeah. have a church. Mm-hmm. If I ask you, Pastor, you have a church. Yeah, this is my, you don't have a church. Mm-hmm. Don't. We're, we're all one church. church. Oh, you yeah. are church. We are the church. church. Mm-hmm. Yes. We go as a garden of the saint. Mm-hmm. 
Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's a church. It's a gathering of the church. Yeah. Correct. Like not Deborah for anyone. Was, yeah. We were saying that. Yeah, yeah exactly. like Deborah was saying, God, the Bible doesn't say churches. <laughs> it says my church. Yeah. yeah. There's only one church. There's not. Yeah. Do you like you say Deborah's church, Peter's yeah. church, whoever's church? Yeah. God, Jesus talks about one church, one and church. that's that's our heavenly church. That's not it. not a building, like you say. It's yeah. not no. a building, and it's yeah. it's not about the pastor in the front of a stage. That is what we as men have have made it. Uh, I think the church is just a place that has become easier to congregate for like-minded people to mm-hmm. think. But at the end of the day, we're supposed to be walking the earth, and we're supposed to be spreading the word of Jesus mm-hmm. because our time is is running that's out. That is the work of a Christian. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He said, "Go ye into the world, world yeah. and, and preach the gospels. gospels. That's it. Whoever believes is baptized a person in the name of the Father mm-hmm. and the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And that the Holy Spirit at the end of the verse yes. means the Holy Spirit is going to guide you. The Jesus yes. said it's going yes. to be your word, your provider, yes. right? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. if you have Jesus, if you have the Holy Spirit, yeah, you will not go to a pastor for you to be scammed. Mm-hmm. You never went to a pastor. You never went to a man of God. You never went to a church. Mm-hmm. You went to a casino and you mm-hmm. got scammed. Mm-hmm. Because the Holy Spirit will never direct you to go to a, a, a casino. Mm-hmm. Exactly, yes. Mm-hmm. Because you don't have Holy Spirit. That's why you got scammed by the scammer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because the Holy Spirit will direct you. This place yeah. you are going, oh my God, don't yeah. go. It's not a good place. Well, if we ask, how do you know it's the Holy Spirit? You know, it's that little, that that small little mm. pit seed in your stomach mm. when you know you're going into something that doesn't feel right. Yeah. Yeah. That's you your Holy Spirit. Yeah. yeah. You feel it. Especially yeah. for young yeah. for young believers, for young Christians coming into their faith. You know, like everybody says, oh, you just, you can hear the word, you can hear God's voice. A lot of times it, it, it's not like that. We mm. we don't all hear God's voice mm-hmm. in the beginning. You have we, have to, we have to build that relationship. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's important, yes. that little that little pit seed in the tummy that says to you, "This doesn't seem right." That is, you know yeah, that that is God. Right. Back fast. You got it back, yeah. Because that's why God automatically gave us you get scammed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so don't exactly. Go. Yeah. Yeah. Let the spirit control your ways. Yes. If only you're a Christian. Yeah. And you have yeah. the Holy Spirit. Yes. The Holy Spirit will direct you yeah. to Amen. wherever you will go. Amen. Yeah. I believe that. Yes. Yeah. yes. Amen. Because yeah. it's very dangerous for you to go to a place and you don't even know what the pastor is using mm. to preach. Mm. And it's dangerous for the pastor to put the hand on your forehead yeah. mm. and pray for you. Mm. Whilst you you believe he's talking through Jesus, mm. but you don't know what is inside the closet. Closet, yes. yes. So you yes. must know what you are worshipping. Yes, and who lays hands on mm. you. Mm. That's why it's imperative that every morning you've got to put your armor of God on. Mm-hmm. I mean, I do it with my mm-hmm. daughter. We stand at the edge of the bed. We're going to put our shoes on. We're going to put our breastplate on. I do that with her every morning mm-hmm. so that we are covered from these things because mm-hmm. you don't know. It's even just in a simple touch, you you know, the transference of, mm-hmm. of one spirit to Is another. That's yeah. why you have to put your armor on every day. You you can't go into battle. You're not going to walk out, out your front door mm-hmm. if you, you know there's a war on and not have your gun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing here. We have from the day that, that mankind has put, has been birthed and in this earth, we have fought a spiritual battle. Mm-hmm. We This is this is not a, a, a now battle. This, yeah. you know, oh, it's coming to the end times, the... This has been a battle of the centuries, and we need to know that our our place. It's it's we have to put our armor on. Yeah. We have to guard ourselves. So once you have this armor on, mm. you can never go to that place. That armor, you armor. won't. That you, you the, your Holy Spirit won't allow you. It no. won't even. That thought no. will not even because yes. remember, Satan can't uh, hear you your thoughts. Right. He doesn't it's know right. your thoughts. He can put the thoughts mm-hmm. in, and once you've got your your helmet on. Those those voices and those thoughts they won't they won't even be a thing there because I mean it's the same with um, coming out off of drugs mm-hmm. you know the the cravings the the you know I I had to literally surrender it all on the floor to God and say God please I can't mm-hmm. I can't do this on my own you've got to do it for me and I I can sit here today and say that where I am right now and it's only by the grace of God I don't have thoughts of cravings I don't have thoughts of using anymore. Because Amen. God has blocked my ears to those voices. Beautiful. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 And every Christian must understand that he or she is a man of God. Amen. Yes. There's no, nothing like a special man of God. We are all man of God. We all. We are all equal in God's eyes. No one is higher and lower. We are all. We are all. 
Even Jesus came to the point of washing their feet. Exactly. He showed to show that he's, <laughs> you know, I mean, he's the king of kings. He has, this, he has our God and he's washing the feet, the feet of his disciples. Yeah. So we are all men of God. Oh. Yes. And we all have the power yes. to curse and power to bless. On Amen. our tongue, it's in the Bible. Amen. That he has given the power mm-hmm. of curse and power of blessings on mm-hmm. our tongues. Exactly. So everybody has this power. Yeah. Most powerful muscle in the body. <laughs> so if you time. believe you have this power, mm-hmm. you are a man of God. Amen. You can even tell mountains to move, it will move. Exactly. Yeah, it's speaking life for death. death. Yes. So what do you have to say at the yeah. end of the show? <laughs> I, think, I think for me, just um, the, you know, I, I really, much like Michelle, I stand here today really by God's grace. Um, I am who I am because of him. Um, my family, my life is because of him. And I'm thankful every day that I get up to be able to share who he is in my life. I'm thankful every day that I get the op- that the Lord gives me the opportunities to share him with others. Um, you know, my work in recovery, um, my work with um, uh, rehabilitation is, is really something that is such a great reward. I've always said there is no money that can buy when somebody finds their worth. When you feel worthless and God shows you that you're worthy. Mm -hmm. When you feel hopeless and God shows you hope. um, Those are the rewards that no no money can pay for. And having having the discernment, every day I pray for God, give me this discerning spirit. Let me walk and see people through your eyes, not mine. Let me love with your love, not mine. Your will be done, not mine. And it's not always easy for us just to surrender, but I think also knowing that the only way you come to meet him is when you throw up your arms and you say, I'm done. I'm Amen. done. Amen. <laughs> Take me. Strongest place that you could be is on your knees. Mm-hmm. Amen. <laughs> That's it. That's the only thing you That's the say. only thing I'm going to say. <laughs> Strongest place to be is on your knees. <laughs> all right. Yeah. All right. God bless you all for Thank coming you. on my Thank show Thank you for tonight. having us. Thank and uh, you, you. I had a, a great show. Thank you. And I learned a lot thank from you. you. And I know you've also learned a lot from yes. me. Yes, amen. Absolutely. That's how the church is supposed to be. Exactly. To educate ourselves. Yes. And keep us strong yeah. in the Lord. Yes. Amen. So we do the right thing. Amen. Because at the end of the day, we are all going to one place. Exactly. Either paradise or heaven, we'll go. Yeah. <laughs> to our Father's house. <laughs> to We're our going to our Father's house. house. <laughs> to our Father's house. <laughs> We're, We're going home. home. <laughs>